Hello and welcome to this little video. Um, I want to talk about how I use my sketchbooks. Uh, I absolutely love working um, in the landscape um, and often I'll take lots of photographs as well but not always can I be out in the landscape as we all know. You know we live in the UK so the weather can be a bit against us all for us anyway. Um, this painting I did uh, very quickly yesterday um, from a photograph I'd taken um, inspired by Dartmoor in Devon. And it's uh, long been um, a realisation of mine that actually it's not necessarily this place that I want to paint, it's the feeling I get of being in the, in the place. So hence I blur the edges, I don't have a defined um, sky and land, uh, the whole thing becomes one because as I say it's all about the, the wonderful feeling I get from being out there. So to quickly run through the colours I'm going to use, I will put a list that will um, go on to the end of the video beginning even would make sense. This is a mixture of uh, cerulean and uh, ultramarine just to give it that brighter sort of blue. This is a mixture of ultramarine opera rose to make purple then I get add a bit of um, yellow ochre or raw sienna uh, to really muddy it and then I put a bit of indigo in then I get this really dark grey but it granulates and you get some fabulous um, effects from it. This is oh those are all Daniel Smith colour uh, sorry Winsor Newton colours this green is a green gold by Daniel Smith and I love the freshness, the zestiness of it. It's a fantastic colour. I've also got a few uh, watercolour pencils that I will employ. <laughs> so these are these fabulous uh, Faber-Castell uh, colours that, um, again, I'll put a list up at, uh, at the beginning. Watercolour pencils, so I dunk them into a bit of water and then do some drawing on or straight into wetted paper. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to replicate this within reason, but I also want to show you, share with you a few tips, like adding a little bit dark here and here, and how that actually helps the whole composition. So let's get on with it. So this is, um, oh, by the way, this is a sketchbook that, um, uh, so it's cartridge paper, great paper, but not watercolour paper. So of course, when you come to start using watercolour paper, it will behave slightly differently. Now this is Saunders Waterford. Um, not paper, uh, traditional white and um, yeah let's get cracking. So I've mixed up the grey so we're all good to go in the first instance rather than, so there's a massive great puddle, rather than watch you watch me doing it I can do an explanatory note. But to start with what I want to do is get a little bit of water. I'm using my SAA's number 14 sable because it holds so much water and I love that because then everything works quite quickly. What I want to do is just get some water in the middle so that I've got some areas that are going, the, the pigments are going to flow around from the very beginning and I'm quite liberal as you can see and I've got some dirty marks already. Now who did that? <laughs> so, right, picking up uh, some of the blues just to get, a, get that fabulous bright blue going on in the sky so that that will touch the uh, the wetted areas and meander as you can see it's already doing that now and um, a little bit more of the lighter blue bring that along there so I'm quite quick and bold with my mark making as you can see and again it's it's that's all part of the fact that it's just a, um, a an essence of being out there in in the world and the feeling wonderful feeling that it gives you so I'm just softening those edges and you see I'm using I'm being quite mean with my brush but I just want a lot of softness in this painting right and without further ado I'm going to I'm just cleaning my brush and taking off as much of the moisture as possible because I, having mixed the color what I'd last thing I want to do is start diluting it so giving that a good old stir I've got half a pint as usual. <laughs> I, I don't often have the problem of mixing too little. I often have the problem of mixing too much. So what I really want to do is get that, dropping that into, which I'm going to a bit more of the opera rose in there. I'll just that to really come out. There we go. A bit more of indigo as well. So I'm always assessing, seeing how it's going to work out. Because I want it to be quite a blue, um, a blue grey cloud. <laughs> Now you can see I'm rolling my brush. The reason I'm doing that is that I know that I can get um, more pigment releasing onto the paper. And I just want to get that moving around a little bit. Love the fluidity of watercolors. It's so exciting. Bring that all the way down here. Right, and even at this stage, I'm going to drop a little bit of dark in there. 
maybe a touch just here we'll see right and maybe you're gonna dash there I say always assessing your eyes darting around wondering if that's where you want to have any pigment or not I'm using masking tape and I'm never a great fan of masking tape because you can't lift those colors off so well and that, that distorts your perception of what you're doing that's, that's why I prefer to use sellotape around the edges but hey ho couldn't find my thin sellotape this morning typical okay so that's really quite a dramatic sky already so how do we lighten it up and get that green you can just about see a little bit here well you get your Daniel Smith green on the go which is this one and what I want this is to be quite thick so I'm going to take quite a lot of dense pigment making sure I've got very little moisture on my brush and then I'm going to do some wonderfully daring bold sweeps across and one coming across there I think and you see these white bits where the the tooth of the paper has um, kind of interrupted the flow of pigment don't try and fill in all the gaps it's nice to have some that's just a little bit got a little bit of light in it right now this comes to the crazy bit you'll probably think what am I actually doing but it just helps with the composition there's a little bit of green on my brush I'm adding it just into there and here possibly just there it actually works when you see the painting as a whole it works to help um, the flow of the composition. Again, I'm going to just clear up those edges. You hear it scraping along. I'm trying to press hard to get rid of those colours, but not really coming off terribly well. Okay. And then I want to have some orange. So I'm going to go, I'm not going to worry with orange paint. I'm going to go straight with my uh, orange paper castell pencil and draw some lines once I've dunked it into the water I can then use that pigment to uh, meander around the painting which is rather fun it's best to be experimental as possible and I'm not actually at the moment looking at any photograph or really referring much to my original painting the sketch it's all about being loose now again this is like crazy stuff why did she put orange in the sky well because it feels right and it works and i'm going to blend it now it's interesting because let's say this is watercolor paper how this behaves slightly differently than the cartridge paper but again it's all good nothing to worry about right i've got quite the puddle here i am just going to tip my pad to help that to move around a little bit if you're not mindful of these areas you'll end up with hard lines and cauliflowers and goodness knows what and we want our cauliflowers for our dinner ha uh -huh. <laughs> just bring some of that pigment to move around a little bit we've got some hard edges up here but do you know i'm going to go with that i rather like that so i'm going to stick with that we can't have it in my opinion i don't want it all neat and tidy all the time i'd like it to have have some energy about it in its own right the painting that is i'd like some energy in my own right <laughs> you know, let's just dampen that area don't want to block in all of the uh, light areas do you know i said i'm not going to mess with that but i am I'm just going to take a lot of that pigment off. i'm going to gently go over that little edge there just to see if i can soften that little line that was starting to develop there that bit i'm going to leave though um, and I'm going to pop a little bit of extra dark in there. Okay, it's more blue than dark. But we're starting to get, if I come back to the sketch, it's starting to come back to that look, which is great. So it's got, it's expressive, it's got life to it. It's not, um, you know, just a boring, so I'm, I'm blending the dark sky into the land now. Ish. <laughs> moving it around I love tipping the pigment you know tipping the pad so the pigments all wander around and you get some amazing effects in a much looser impressionistic sort of painting there we go i'm just going to dry my brush again and pick up some more of the dark 
I'll obviously get to a point where I'm going to have to um, stop because the painting will need to dry before I can go in with any further marks. So that's there'll be an interruption in proceedings. <laughs> I'm going to drop a little bit of dark in here. I was saying to you about how this actually works for the composition. It's the, the weirdest thing, but it just does. And even a little bit more. I'll bring that down here a bit. Let's drop that pigment in there. It's diluting a lot because I put so much water on the paper, which is fine. But I just want to have that a bit more controlled. And going back up to there, make that a little bit darker. Looks worse because you've got the masking tape on there. But um, it does lighten up and it will work as creating an interesting effect. Right, I'm going to use my dark grey. I think it's Payne's grey. Yep. Uh, pencil now, watercolour pencil, and do some, just some drawn lines. It's easy to do um, lines that represent landscape, you know, that, that division which I was saying I was trying to avoid. Um, so be mindful of that. If that's your go-to sort of shape, just, just bear that in mind. So now I'm just using the pencil on the side just to get some, again, some interesting marks. Can move this around because the paper's lovely and wet. So these don't have to stay. Just trying to remember to be free with my mark making. Now there's something about this little bit here that I'm not particularly keen on. So do I lift it or do I wet it? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. I think I'm going to... Yeah, very interesting. Right, I'm going to lift some of that, I think. Just to encourage that to blend. But I don't, as I say, don't want to create that sense of a division between the sky and the land. That's not what I want to achieve. So, tip it again. I've got quite a bit of grey on my brush and I'm just going to dribble that in. Get that to meander. Do its thing a little, maybe even to here. Right. And I'm going to have something coming over here. It's looking a bit neat and bright. Sorry, I've tipped the pad slightly so you might have a distorted image at the moment. There we are. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there because I need that to dry so that I can see, you know, if I need to put any more colours on or go back in with the watercolour pencils. Having said that, look, I just want to do something now. So... Why? Don't know. Just felt right. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> something just speaks to you. Now I'm going to just lift a little bit of colour. Yeah, I'll just get a little bit of light coming back in. You see, the, the sketchbook... You kind of just go in a bit gung-ho and enjoy yourself. When you're doing something where you're in your studio space, you start to consider and assess and fiddle. So I am going to stop there and allow it to dry. Right, back in a moment. And we're back. So I've allowed the painting to dry and the colour has lifted quite a lot here. So what I really want to do is achieve... The, the darkness that I've got here in the um, these really strong dark areas for the clouds um, ish. So what I've done is although it's uh, I've dried it, I've also very gently dampened the surface using my uh, very soft hake, which is made by Rosemary and Co. Very good idea because it doesn't lift the pigment too much. Although I can see because I've just wetted a certain area, it has moved the pigment around a little. That's sort of inevitable, I'm afraid, but what I'm going to do is just roll my brush now in an attempt to get some more strong pigment into the uh, slightly dampened area to have you know, a bit more, a bit more drama into the, into the painting and the scene. A little bit more up here. I can see that some of the areas have dried so quick it's, it's very warm in my studio. I'll take that bit out, don't want that. So what I'll do is very carefully dampen these edges to allow that to move around. I'm being very, very sort of gentle in my 
touch on the paper with this little brush. This is a, a nylon, uh, it's called a flatmate, and it's absolutely worn out, but um, very useful little brush made by SAA, the company, an online company. I'll put all links to everything in the uh, in the sort of credits at the end of the video when I upload it to YouTube. Oopsie, now I don't want that bit. That's got to go. But so you've got to be careful. You don't because I've used predominantly um, granulating pigments, opaque pigments that are or semi opaque. They um, will lift if you're not careful. Over here, what I want to have is another flash of that gorgeous Daniel Smith's green gold that um, works brilliantly. I like that much better now that's got a sense of real drama about it. I might just clean my brush a little bit. I'm going to go into here if I can. Well, I've already gone into there so we'll, we'll give that a go. <laughs> give the brush of the paint a bit of a stir and I'm taking a lot off my brush. I'm going to use the end, the, the tip of my brush, just to drop a little bit more of that um, really strong colour into the, the painting. And I'll soften that by just dampening the edge very, very carefully. I quite like the way that's moving around, that's rather nice. Says her and she messes it up. <laughs> Ugh. There we are, all sorted. Don't like that hole there, so that's got to go. And I'm just going to lift that bit out. There we are. Okay, I like that much more. I think that's got sort of power about it. Um, and now I'm going to get, I'm picking up some green gold because I want to really have a, a really dynamic bright area here. So if I just drop that in, and maybe even where it's gone to that the sky. I'm just going to pop that on there. Do you know it's interesting because it's a feel. I just feel it needed it there. It's there's kind of, I suppose it's um, uh, years of practice, I guess. <laughs> I think, oh yeah, that ought to go there and that ought to go there. It's dropping a little bit of dabbing, a little bit of pigment here and there. I want some more green there, make that brighter. Oh yeah, I think that might do it. Maybe just a dash there. Yep. Okay, I'm just going to move those pigments around again a little, not a lot, and uh, wipe that bit off. And what I really want to do is introduce a little more orange. So I'm going just with my pencil, that Faber-Castell orange, and um, I just want a bit more brightness in here in a couple of places. Possibly a bit more there. Smudge it. I'm going to have one going across there. I don't know, it just feels it needs something here. Be careful because that's the centre of the painting. You've got to mind that, what you're doing there. That just felt right. And a bit more maybe here. Okay. And I'm going to leave it there. So what I'll do is take the masking tape off. So you can see that it get, has a, a really nice border. Nice clean border so you can see what you've achieved more clearly. There we are. So, put that to the side. There we are. That's a expressive little um, painting using a fairly limited palette but and a, and a few um, Faber-Castell watercolour pencils. These are amazing. Totally recommend these. Okay, hope you've enjoyed that, folks. And if you have, please feel free to... to do a thumbs up on the YouTube and um, like and share, share with your friends. And if anybody wants to sign up to my newsletter, please do. So beginning to get to a point where i um, thinking about offering more workshops. I'm certainly offering my one-to-ones now. So, you know, quick little bit of advertising. Look, I said I'd finished. And what am I doing? Fiddling. <laughs> Can't help myself. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Be careful. Right, there we are. That's it. That's it done. Right. Bye for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.